His head destroying cadence, the voice sank. It seemed to lead the advancing march of life into some still original inane. But Savitri answered to Almighty Death, O dark browed sophist of the universe, who veils the real with its own idea, hiding with brute objects nature's living face, masking eternity with the dance of death, thou hast woven the ignorant mind into a screen and made of thought errors pervert and scribe and a false witness of mind's servant's sense. In a state of the sorrow of the world, champion of a harsh and sad philosophy, thou hast used words to shutter out the light and call in truth to vindicate a lie. A lying reality is a falsehood's crown, and a perverted truth our richest gem. O death, thou speakest truth, but truth that slays. I answer to thee with the truth that saves. A traveler New discovering himself, one made of matter's world, his starting point. He made of nothingness, his living room, and night, a process of the eternal light, and death, a spur towards immortality. God wrapped his head from sight in matter's cowl. His consciousness dived into inconscious depths. All knowledge seemed a huge dark nation. Infinity or a boundless zero's form. His abysms of bliss became insensible deeps. Eternity a blank perpetual vast. Annaling an original nullity. The timeless took its ground in emptiness and drew the figure of a universe that the spirit might adventure into time and wrestle with Adam and necessity and the soul pursue a cosmic pilgrimage. A spirit moved in black immensity and built a thought in ancient nothingness. A soul in God's tremendous void was lit, a secret, laboring glow of nascent fire. In Nihil's gulf, his mighty puissance wrought. She swung her formless motion into shapes, made matter the body of the bodiless. Infant and dim, the eternal mites awoke. In inert matter breathed a slumbering life. In a subconscious life, mind lay asleep. In waking life, it stretched its giant limbs to shake from it the topper of its brows. A senseless substance quivered into sense. The world's heart commenced to beat, its eyes to see. In the crowded, dumb vibrations of a brain, thought fumbled in a ring to find itself, discovered speech and fed the newborn word that bridged to its spans of light the world's Ignorance. In a waking mind, the thinker built his house. A reasoning animal willed and planned and sought. He stood erect among his brute compeers. He built a life new 
measured the universe, opposed his fate, and wrestled with unseen powers, conquered, and used the laws that ruled the world, and hoped to ride the heavens and reach the stars. A master of his huge environment, now through mind's windows, stares the demigod, hidden behind the curtains of man's soul. He has seen the unknown, looked on truth's veilless face. A ray has touched him from the eternal sun. Motionless, voiceless, in foreseeing depths, he stands awake in supernature's light and sees a glory of arisen wings and sees the vast descending might of God. O death, thou lookst on an unfinished world, assailed by thee and of its road unsure, peopled by imperfect minds and ignorant lives, and sayest, God is not, and all is vain. How shall the child already be the man? Because he is infant, shall he never grow? Because he is ignorant, shall he never learn? In a small fragile seed, a great tree lurks. In a tiny gene, a thinking being is shut. A little element in a little sperm, it grows and is a conqueror and a sage. Then will thou spew out death, God's mystic truth, deny the occult spiritual miracle. Still will thou say there is no spirit, no God, a mute material nature waits and sees. She has invented speech, unveiled a will. Something there waits beyond towards which she strives. Something surrounds her into which she grows. To uncover the spirit, to change back into God, to exceed herself is her transcendent task. In God concealed, the world began to be. Tardily, it travels towards manifest God. Our imperfection towards perfection toils. The body is a chrysalis of a soul. The infinite holds the finite in its arms. Time travels towards revealed eternity. A miracle structure of the eternal mage. Matter, its mystery, hides from its own eyes. A scripture written out in cryptic signs, an occult document of the all wonderful heart. All here bears witness to his secret might. In all we feel his presence and his power. A blaze of his sovereign glory is the sun. A glory is the gold and glimmering moon. A glory is his dream of purple sky. A march of his greatness are the wheeling stars. His laughter of beauty breaks out in green trees. His moments of beauty triumph in a flower. The blue seas a chant, the rivulet's wandering voice. Are murmurs falling from the eternal's heart. This world is God, fulfilled in outwardness. His ways challenge our reason and our sense. By blind brute movements of an ignorant force, by means of slight, small, obscure or base, a greatness founded upon little things, he has built a world in the unknowing void. His forms he has massed 
from infinitesimal dust. His marvels are built from insignificant things. If mind is crippled, life untaught and crude, if brutal masks are there and evil acts, they are incidents of his vast and varied plot. His great and dangerous dramas need its steps. He makes with these and all his passion play. A play and yet no play, but the deep scheme of a transcendent wisdom finding ways to meet her Lord in the shadow and the night. Above her is the vigil of the stars. Watched by a solitary infinitude, she embodies in dumb matter the divine. In symbol minds and lives the absolute. A miracle monger her mechanical craft. Matter's machine worked out the laws of thought. Life's engines served the labor of a soul. The mighty mother her creation wrought a huge caprice, self-bound by iron laws, and shut God into an enigmatic world. She lulled the omniscient into nascent sleep, Omnipotence on inertia's back she drove, trod perfectly with divine unconscious steps, the enormous circle of her wonder works. Immortality assured itself by death. The eternal's face was seen through drifts of time. His knowledge it is guised as ignorance. His good, his sword, in evil's monstrous bed, made error a door by which truth could enter in. His plant of bliss watered with sorrow's tears. A thousand aspects point back to the one. A dual nature covered the unique. In this meeting of the eternal's mingling masks, this tangled dance of passionate countries, locking like lovers in a forbidden embrace, the quarrel of their lost identity, in this wrestle and wrangle of the extremes of power, Earth's million roads struggled towards the deity. All stumbled on behind this stumbling guide. Yet every stumble is a needed pace on unknown routes to an unknowable goal. All blundered and struggled towards the one divine. As if transmuted by a titan spell, the eternal powers assumed a dubious face. Idols of an oblique divinity they owed the heads of animal or troll, assumed the ears of the fawn, the setter's hoof, or hovered the demoniac in their gaze. A crooked maze they made of thinking mind, they suffered a metamorphosis of the heart, admitting bacon revelers from the night into its sanctuary of delights as in a Dionysian masquerade. On the highways, in the gardens of the world, they wallowed oblivious of their divine parts as drunkards of a dire Circean wine, or a child who sprawls and sports in nature's mire. Even wisdom, hewer of the roads of God, is a part in the deep, disastrous gate. Lost in the pilgrim's wallet and the script, she fails to read the map and watch the star. A poor, self-righteous virtue is a stock and reasons pragmatic grope or abstract sight 
or the technique of a brief hour success she teaches an asha in utility school on the ocean surface of vast consciousness small thoughts in souls are fished up into a net but the great truths escape are narrow cast guarded from vision by creation's depths obscure the swim in blind and enormous gulfs safe from the little sounding blades of mind too far for the puny divers shallow plunge our mortal vision peers with ignorant eyes it is no gaze on the deeper heart of things our knowledge walks leaning on error stout a worshipper of false dogmas and false gods or fanatic of a fierce intolerant greed or a seeker doubting every truth he finds a skeptic facing light with adamant no or chilling the heart with a dry ironic smile a cynic stamping out the god in man the darkness wallows in the paths of time or lifts its giant head to blot the stars it makes a cloud of the interpreting mind and intercepts the oracles of the sun yet the light is there it stands at nature's doors it holds a torch to lead the traveler in it waits to be kindled in our secret cells it is a star lighting an ignorant sea a lamp upon our poor pierce in the night as knowledge grows light flames up from within it is a shining warrior in the mind an eagle of dreams in the divining heart an armor in the fight a bow of god then larger dawns arrive and wisdom's pomps cross through the beings dim half lighted fields philosophy climbs up thoughts cloud bent peaks and science tears out nature's occult powers enormous genes who serve the dwarf's small needs exposes the sealed minutiae of our art and conquers her by her own captive force on heights unreached by minds most daring so upon a dangerous edge of failing time the soul draws back into its deathless self man's knowledge becomes god's supernal ray there is the mystic realm whence leaps the power whose fire burns in the eyes of seer and sage a lightning flash of visionary sight it plays upon an inward verge of mind thought silenced gazes into a brilliant void a voice comes down from mystic unseen peaks a cry of splendor from a mouth of storm it is the voice that speaks to night's profound it is the thunder and the flaming call above the plains that climb from nation to earth a hand is lifted towards the invisible realm beyond the superconscious blinding line and plucks away the screens of the unknown a spirit within looks into the eternal size it hears the word to which our hearts were dead 
it sees through the blaze in which our thoughts grew blind. It dreams from the naked breasts of glorious truth. It learns the secrets of eternity. Thus, all was plunged into the riddling night. Thus, all is raised to meet a dazzling sun. O death, this is the mystery of the way. In earth's anomalous and tragic field, carried in its aimless journey by the sun, mid the forced marches of the great dumb stars, a darkness occupied the fields of God. And matter's world was governed by thy shape. Thy mask has covered the eternal's face. The bliss that made the world has fallen asleep. Abandoned in the vast, she slumbered on. An evil transmutation overtook her members till she knew herself no more. Only through her creative slumber flit frail memories of the joy and beauty meant. Under the sky's blue laugh, and green scarped trees, and happy squanderings of scents and hues in the field of the golden promenade of the sun and the vigil of the dream light of the stars. Amid high meditating heads of hills, on the bosom of voluptuous rain kissed earth, and over the sapphire tumblings of the sea. But now, the primal innocence is lost, and death and ignorance govern the mortal world, and nature's visage wears a grayer hue. Earth still has kept her early charm and grace, the grandeur and the beauty still are hers, but veiled is the divine inhabitant. The souls of men have wandered from the light and the great mother turns away her face. The eyes of the creatric bliss are closed and sorrow's touch has found her in her dreams. As she turns and tosses on her bed of void because she cannot wake and find herself and cannot build again her perfect shape Oblivious of her nature and her state, forgetting her instinct of felicity, forgetting to create a world of joy. She weeps and makes her creature's eyes to weep, testing with sorrow's edge her children's breasts. She spends on life's vain waste of hope and toil, the poignant luxury of grief and tears. In the nightmare change of her half-conscious dream, tortured herself and torturing by her touch, she comes to our hearts and bodies and our lives, wearing a hard and cruel mask of pain. Our nature, twisted by the abortive birth, returns wry answers to life's questioning shocks, an acrid relish finds in the world's pangs, drinks the sharp wine of grief's perversity. A curse is laid on the pure joy of life. Delight, God's sweetest sign and beauty's twin, dreaded by aspiring saint and austere sage, is shunned. A dangerous and ambiguous cheat, a specious trick of an infernal power. It tempts the soul to its self-hurt and fall. A Puritan god made pleasure a poisonous fruit or red drug in the marketplace of death and sin the child of nature's ecstasy. 
Yet every creature hunts for happiness, buys with harsh pangs or tears by violence from the dull breast of the inanimate globe, some fragment or some broken shard of bliss. Even joy itself becomes a poisonous draught. Its hunger is made a dreadful hook of fate. All means are held good to catch a single being. Eternity is sacrificed for a moment's bliss. Yet for joy and not for sorrow, earth was made. And not as a dream in endless suffering time. Although God made the world for his delight, an ignorant power took charge and seemed his will, and death's deep falsity has mastered life. All grew a play of chance, simulating fate.